Good evening and welcome from a um, wonderful evening, wonderful summer's evening, finally, after our last Autumn Towers one being in the summer and us being kind of stuck in the uh, autumn. And this evening is a lovely day and we are at um, Southsea, Clarence Pier in Portsmouth and we're going to have our yearly visit. Um, we haven't been down here yet, we do actually live in Portsmouth, but believe it or not, we don't come down here that much. Um, the ride selection is okay, um, it should hopefully keep us entertained this evening and we'll take you around what the offering is for 2017. We'll talk about what's coming back for next year if you missed it on our site. We're going to have a little look at the little climbing area, um, we're also going to have a look at the Crazy Golf and of course um, you can't come down to the seaside without going in the arcade. So stay with us, um, it's sure to be hopefully a nice, um, maybe a bit breezy but a nice warm one and we'll see what we can find. We're going to start this evening with the park's centrepiece ride. So centrepiece ride is Skyways. Uh, anyone that's been down here will know that their uh, roller coaster has been here ever since I remember. I mean, I've been visiting this park and down in Portsmouth probably since, oh, I don't know, the early 90s. Um, easily 25 years. And this ride has always been here. It's always the one I remember. I remember when I came down initially uh, with the family, I was too small to ride it. And uh, I remember when I first got on it, it was um, it was good fun. It was quite scary, you know. You kind of hadn't been on the big rides, the big theme parks and things. You were brought down to the fair to have a great time. Uh, quick thrills, not too much here. And here it is. Um, we look at it, and uh, it just looks like metal. A lot, a lot of metal. Um, and somewhere in there is a ride, believe it or not. Um, it hasn't been painted, I don't think, over the year. And if it has, it's been painted grey which is a little bit boring. There has been a little bit of theming added to the front, which we'll go around and have a look at in a minute. But it still provides the thrills. You have, remarkably, got to be 1.2 metres to go on this ride, uh, which, is quite, which is quite tall when you consider you can take in the old corkscrew and, um, you know, 13 and Dragon's Fury and uh, Spimble Wizard. But um, it's popular down here. It's certainly the park centrepiece ride. As we look back a little bit later, you'll see across that it takes up sort of half of the park space. Um, runs two trains, as you may see in the distance. Um, there's a red one you can see the back side of down there, and there's a blue one in front of it. There's four cars to each train, two trains um, with two sets of cars, so it can hold eight people at once when we're following eight people on the other train. It's very popular. Um, it is the evening here, so it's probably not as busy as what it would have been if we'd have come down earlier. But the park is still quite vibrant, still quite vibrant, quite a lot going on. Um, as you can see here, we've got the Twister, the Waltzer, and we're going to have a look at those in just a minute. Apologies if it's a bit windy, we've come round to the front of the ride now, there's a lovely burger van here, everyone likes a good burger, we may need one of those in later. The ride's just about to go round, so if we have a quick look at the ride, we have taken a video of it, and we'll pan across to the front of the ride. So the buildings which you see across the top, the ones across the top, they're, uh, they're uh, always been part of the ride, certainly as I remember. The board's along the bottom with various characters on the top sort of marvel and ones like that, they're new, and the wonderful Skyway sign at the, at the top with LED lighting. It's been there now about three seasons. You know, the rides here do seem to be really well kept. Um, we'll wait for it to go over. Just about to shoot up. So the rides here do seem to be really well kept. We come down, we come down from the closed season, we come to the arcade, probably come down more when we do the open season. You know, they're always being stripped down, they're always being maintained. There's always a good selection of rides here. And this one particularly for its age is in, you know, really good condition. It looks clean, they keep the painting up to date. When you look around the park as we walk around, you'll see it's also quite clean, but certainly for a pit. So this is the centerpiece ride, so we're going to give the ride a go now, and we'll talk about it again when we get off. We've just been on it. Um, we haven't been on it for, a, I haven't been on it certainly for a couple of years. It's kind of what you expect from a pin ferry ride, honestly. A little bit, a little bit jerky. Um, quite quick, quite nippy, quite sharp corners. You know, the kind of thing you'd expect really from a, t a 25, 30 year old ride. Um, Kat? It's not bad for a pin, but it's no nemesis. It's no nemesis. Well, would you believe it? Apart from the fact you're on top of the track, not under it, stupid boy. I, I really liked it. 
He really likes it. He's already switched Pokemon back on before we go along to the next ride, but he really likes it. While we're here, as we walk along here, this is a part of Dodgems. Now, as you'd expect when you come to a seaside resort, um, you expect to see Dodgems, and lo and behold, there they are. Um, nothing spectacular. We're actually going to give the Dodgems a bit of a miss today. There's not that many people on park. Well, there's a few people coming off. As you can see, they've got wristbands and they're sort of all ready to go. We're going to give that a bit of a miss today, and we're going to wander over to another part of the park and have a look at some of the other rides. No Dodgems today? Nah. No. No Dodgems today, I'm afraid. We need a few more people for that. We need a few more people. The same kids seem to be getting back on. You know, this guy's already wrapping them up for the night. Look, he's not... He's not expecting any more visitors, so uh, we're going to give the Dodgems a miss and we'll carry on walking around the park and we'll switch back on on the next ride. So we've moved along to the park's second roller coaster, which is just behind us now. Um, this is the Speedy Coaster. Now for those that follow our site, they may have seen that down in um, Funland in Hayden Island, they had a very similar one called Woody's Coaster, which was removed this year. Um, in favour of their Neptune's Fury. And the Speedy Coaster is, is certainly more for children than what it is for for the adults like the Skyways. Now, Kurt, who's currently filming this, has just tried to go on the Speedy Coaster. Unfortunately, he's been told he's too big. Now, we look at the height restriction. We'll quickly walk over to the height restriction. Yeah. See, the height restriction is 0.9 and 1.1 accompanied by an adult. So why he can't go on it, we, we're not really sure about. Now granted, he, uh, he might feel a bit big for it, but um, you know, when you've bought a wristband and you want to go on these things, you want to go on them, you want to be uh, able to go on them. We haven't bought wristbands tonight, we're only buying tokens tonight as opposed to wristbands, so I don't feel quite so, uh, quite so con, shall we say. However, it's a bit disappointing. What we have here, we have one of those hang bars, the two minute hang bars. Um, for those that have uh, been to Chesington World of Adventures recently, they would have noticed these hang bars sitting in the wild woods. Um, this one's for cash, so it's free four tokens. Four tokens or two pounds. The tokens are 50p each, so it kind of works out exactly the same. You hang for two minutes and you win 20 quid. Now, for people that can hang for two minutes, I have to say, it seems an absolute no-brainer you'd come down here and rinse them for money. I'm surprised they're not giving away ride tokens or maybe a fluffy toy or something like that, something to kind of deter you going back for more. But no, no indeed, you hang on there for two minutes and uh, you get 20 quid. If I could hang on there for two minutes, I would. Sadly, I can't. So uh, we're going to have to carry moving on, sadly. So here we are over at Peer Pressure. Now this was the first of its type in the UK. It was, I honestly can't remember what year it was. It was quite a few years ago now. And this little mini assault course opened, um, allowing you to sort of shoot up into, uh, into the sky and do a little obstacle course. Now, it never used to be included on the uh, wristband, but it is now. So it really is part of the actual park, and it's a great move by the park to have it, although you've got to have someone trained, obviously, to put harnesses on, as you may be able to see going on here, and you've got to be able to obviously maintain it to a, to a certain degree. When you compare the mechanical rides in the park and you compare some of the other bits and pieces, this is probably quite low maintenance. Now, um, Kurt has been on this. We're not going on it again today, because sadly he did injure himself in it last time. He'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, it, you know, here there used to be kind of a dead spot. The Dodgems used to be down this then. For anyone that hasn't been to the um, to the Clarence Pier before, the Dodgems kind of used to sit here. And it was always a bit of a dead spot. And when it yeah! opened, the park did really advertise it as well. We had it on billboards in Portsmouth. And we had it on roadsides. We had it just about everywhere. And you come down here, and, you know, it's quite an impressive structure. Take a look at it again. You can see kind of all ages going around it. You strap yourself on, and off you go. Nice little assault course. Um, Kurt, what... What happened? Um, Talk to the people. Well, basically, I think I was sort of up here, crossing here. So he was crossing uh, this well, bridge I here. I think it was slightly further back. Um, but it was on one of the boards, and as I walked across, I slipped in one of the gaps. But as I fell, somehow I managed to hit the side of my head on it and cut my ear. Um, but it's sort of meant to catch you before you hit your head, but it, it didn't do a very good job of it. No, so indeed that was the case. Um, so effectively, what happened was is arguably the harnesses, as you can um, as you can see, it, in back. The harnesses are fairly standard for anyone that's been rock climbing or go open or anything. The harnesses are fairly standard, but where you have a, a, a route above you, rather than clicking yourself on and on like you would a go ape, you're kind of in the gods a bit. That depending on your height and your size, you may well slip, and uh, you may well you may well slightly hurt yourself. And there's always an element of risk in this. You know, disappointing when Boy Genius comes back here with uh, a cut ear. 
That is what it is, isn't it? It's what it is. I think it's a great addition to the pier. As I said, we're not going to go on it tonight. There's a few people going around it. Um, a few little children, a few adults. Um, it is suitable for all. Nice little unit, to be honest. Nice little elephant. Well worth a visit. Well, well worth going on. If you're down here and you've got a wristband, 100%. You know, it's only six tokens, three pounds to go around the obstacle course. You just wouldn't get that price anywhere. Well, anywhere in the UK, you're not going to get that price for something like this. Well worth the value, great value. Top located in the middle of the park is this Bloomwell. Now this used to be the centerpiece of the, the front. So when you kind of walked in, we'll, we'll, we will go back down there shortly. This used to be sitting right there as kind of, this is, this is, uh, this is your ride. This is what we're gonna, gonna show you in terms of height and everything. We're not actually sure whether the ride's open because there's nobody here. There's quite a lot of staff around, yet there's nobody here. There's two over there having a snack on the speedy coaster, but there's no one over here. It's quite popular. You see these at uh, your kind of your fairs all over the country. Nothing spectacular, but it does give you good views. You know, the views in Portsmouth are spectacular. So you can go up a little bit. You can look out over towards the Isle of Wight. We'll have a little look over at the Isle of Wight as we, uh, as we walk around the park. Um, you can be able to see the park from up there as well and certainly see this area quite nicely and indeed get in line with the the peer pressure we've just seen so we've got a more relaxing way to look over without climbing across and uh, cutting your ear open <laughs> this is the way to do it this is undoubtedly the way to do it so Kurt's just been on the brake dance ride so the brake dance ride in the background here which we'll look at now that is a piece de resistance down here that is your top thrill ride now that is a 1.4 meter height restriction so you know for a fair actually that's quite high you don't tend to get many of those because they want to encourage the family coming in and they want to encourage everyone going on all the rides now, I haven't been on it today because we have Littleham with us. I have been on this before. There he is, He's, he wants to go on it. He's just not tall enough. Now, this came to the park about three years ago, from what I remember, sitting in exactly the same location. Um, it lasted a season and then disappeared. And then last year, they had the uh, high chairs, high swinging chairs here. And they disappeared as well. Now I'm not surprised because the, the um, sky swings, which, which was here, um, you know, on this pier where there's uh, a lot of wind, and, uh, you know, very often not very good weather. The sky swing did seem a very strange ride to install at the park. It was more closed than it was open, from what we remember. Every time we came down here, it was windy. The ride wasn't open. The chains were flying all over the place. And it was a real shame because, you know, again, when you buy a wristband, you want to get the maximum amount of rides on. However, this year the break dance is back, which is great news. But, um, you know, the break dance is, is, a, is a great, uh, we love the break dance. You know, going back to Rodeo at Chesterton, easily one of my favourite rides, still one of my favourite rides. I absolutely gutted that it's gone. The best operating one we've been on in the country is the one on Blackpool South Pier. That one was insane, absolutely mental. And if you haven't been to Blackpool, when you do go to, or you have been to Blackpool, maybe you've only got the Pledge Beach, head over to the pier and pay to go on the, the break dance because we've been on that and it, we cannot find anything that compares to it. We still don't think it was as good as Rodeo. The way Rodeo was run, particularly when the brakes were held on before you started spinning, was absolutely the G force on your neck and the strain was absolutely mental. We loved it, it made a lot of people sick, which is probably one of the reasons it's not chosen to anymore. But we absolutely loved it. Now, this particular model, I have to say, we're not sure who it's made by. I'm sure someone can fill in the blanks below, please do. It's not great, it's okay, but it's not great. It provides a minor thrill. The ride cycle there was probably only about 60 to 90 seconds, which again, when you're, you know, when you're at a fair, you want, you want something that lasts a little bit longer. It's a good ride, it's good at sort of top, but perhaps not what it could, what it could be. the children's rides it's a little train what's not to like about a little train now you get on over where the train is oddly enough however we feel you should probably get on this side where the control box and the seat is um, whether or not it's been deliberately built backwards or whether or not that's the way they wanted to do it we're not really sure it doesn't look quite right to go through that there when you'd be thinking that the operator when it's raining might want to be sitting underneath that Unfortunately, he or she can't. They are sitting over there out in the open and you have to sort of get on the ride at a curve. It's a little bit strange. We'll walk around and have a quick look. 
Yeah, ingenious bit of design, people. Ingenious bit of design. One of our favourite rides are waters. Now, um, we can't come to a fair and not go to waters. Now, it's only Kurt's gone on this time. For some reason, Littman, he's not feeling the waters today. I'm glad we didn't go to a big thing like today because he's just not feeling the love. Um, now, Kurt, luckily, he's just found two pounds on the floor, so it's just pay for him to go on the waters. We love the waters. What's not to like? Um, we'll have a quick look. Oh, yeah. Sadly, they don't spin on this one. You spin normally, but you don't get someone come to spin you. Now, you'll find a lot of waters and a lot of fairs have people that will spin you as you go around. Sadly, if we look through the gap, they don't. Which is a real shame, because sometimes you get a really good ride and catch it well. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get kind of a really poor spin. You'll probably hear Skyways again in the background. Certainly, the waters are quite bad. Big old machine, it's quite a modern one. It's all steel, got some of the wooden ones we've seen kind of floating around. We see a button, we've seen down in Little Hampton. It's quite a modern one again, quite well quite well maintained during the close season. We've seen it completely spread down. But it is a shame they don't get on there and spin you. You know, health and safety obviously still allow it. We've been to a few theme parks and seaside resorts recently where they've done it. But for whatever decision they decide not to. Kurt's been on it, he thoroughly enjoyed it. He said it wasn't amazing. But it's a waltzer. What's not to like about a waltzer? You come to a seaside resort, you expect to see a waltzer. And people, there it is. Right, we just had our ride on the Twister. Um, it feels a little slow, to be honest. We've been on it before. And uh, it does feel a little bit slower than normal. It does comfortably fit three people, which is nice. Um, compared to Aiden Island, which is the other place we go down in Funland, we do think that one's a little bit quicker, even though it's a bit older, but um, we did hear the refurbishment program that went through, and again, very well maintained down in Aiden Island. So we're now going to go into the arcade, we said here, and we're going to play some games. That was perfect timing. <laughs> there we go. Literally put 10 p in that and won the little red thing. Now we're on the eternal hunt for the That's next machine. What is it? Let's have a look. It looks like a monster. That's what it looks like a pepper. <laughs> it's got a bit of weight to it, to be fair. Might be a bit rubber. Yeah, no. stick it in your pocket. Wow. Happy with that? Not That's too happy. Piece. We've, got, too we've got a lot of two peas left, Kurt. Let's find another machine. Let's do it. He's stolen it. He's taken it out of his pocket <laughs> just like that. Let's go find another one. So for those that have children, and maybe, to be fair, I do exactly the same if you don't have children, the hunt, the hunt for the eternal where is the one closest oh, yeah. to the end continues as we follow Kurt around here. Nothing there. The trick five pound note. We all know that's not coming out. Go on, Kurt. Find it. No, nope. he's still walking. Come on, Kurt. Find a machine. We've just been over there. We can look around the other side where we were, but you look there. Right, okay. We're going back over to the same machine we've just won that other one out of. And coincidentally, the lady that was next to us that was trying to win something has left. So Kurt is first going to go in on that machine. No, he's decided against it. Do not go for the pony, Kurt. You are not a girl. Right. We're not sure. We're not sure if that's going to come out. Is he going to try? He's going to try. We will keep you updated whether or not he gets this. Epic fail. We didn't spend long. Epic fail. So now he's off again. He's off again. Go on, Kurt. Find that machine. He's not happy. He's not happy putting money into these. Who doesn't want to give money to Scooby-Doo? Why don't you want to give money to Scooby-Doo? But they're too far back. They're too far back. He's not feeling it. Now then, while they look at this, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident on a Pikachu. I'm still feeling confident. 
I'm no longer feeling confident. I've got another go. I've got another go. We're going to go for this one at the front. What do you think, Cody? Yeah. It's making a funny noise with me. I don't think it's coming. He's not convinced. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, Ping Chu. They're too heavy. It doesn't grip. I feel ripped off. I feel absolutely ripped off. Let's go find another two P machine. So we are leaving. Uh, the, the, game's the Games Wharf. Wharf. That's what we're leaving, and we're heading into South Sea Island at leisure to again hunt down the 2P machines that may or may not have a prize close to the end because my children can't be bothered to wait for it to come out. We found a machine in this arcade, and I'll tell you, had it been rolling the whole way round, this video would have doubled in length waiting for this boy to find something. So, what we have is. <laughs> It's a popcorn. That's it. We've come over here from model popcorn. But just look at the seriousness on his face, especially the one behind. Look at him. Look, he's looking over intently. He don't want to get involved. And he's so serious. Is he stealing those coins or is he taking them somewhere? Oh, big winner! Look, he's won thirty tickets. He's not even. Look, he's not even looking at the tickets. Look. Look at it flash. It's all gone red. He's only going to want a jackpot out of the machine, which was 42 tickets. Um, but yeah, he's not even looking, because he's too engrossed on the popcorn. He's done it again, look. He's won another nine. Oh, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. He's come over for the popcorn, and he's currently walking away with 50 tokens. Okay, it's quite windy out here. We'll tell you that now. Um, we decided with the tokens in the end that we're going to save them. We've got 104. I don't know why you can get a lot from 104. But here are some of the views. So this is this is Portsmouth, for those that haven't been here. Um, the sunset coming down. That's the Isle of Wight ferry. You can see the Isle of Wight in the background. As we scroll around here, you'll see the biggest landmark in Portsmouth, the Spinnaker Tower, or the Emirates Spinnaker Tower, sorry, because they sold out the council and uh, decided to rename it. And then back down to the fair down here. So we're going to go back down to the fair. There's another 15 minutes before it shuts. Um, there's a couple more things to look at. The Adventure Golf. And, um, and then we'll sum up and have a look what's coming next year to the park. Right, the evening is approaching a close now. We're approaching 8 o'clock. Um, we'll take you quickly here to the um, Adventure Golf. Now actually, we think £4.50 for an adult on a venture golf course is actually quite a lot of money. We'll come back over here now, Kurt will quickly pan around as you can see. I mean, it is very well themed, it was um, refurbished a couple of years back now, and the Treasure Island is very popular here throughout the day. Again, we do think it's quite expensive for an adventure golf course. Um, sadly, we're a bit late now, because where it's nearly 8 o'clock, again, the ladies in there are cashing up, and they're, they're kind of looking forward to going home, so we won't disturb them today. As we head back over to the theme park side, We'll get the little children out of the way and not trip over them. You see the lights are sort of coming into their own now. As the, uh, the sun falls and we go across, the skyways in the background which we've been on. Obviously there are a few little stalls and things that we may not have covered and went through. The walks is probably on its last run now. We've just got time to show you the other two smaller rides which are here. So as we walk up here, we'll see in the background the classic carousel. Funny enough, you don't usually see these uh, at the seaside resorts. We know that Hayden have opened one this year, but kind of a larger one like this rather than a baby one is not so often seen. Now, again, this has been here a good few years now. It doesn't look like there's anyone on it. It doesn't look like there's anyone, uh, anyone even man in it. So I think this one has closed for the night. But very popular. It gets a refurbished. It seems to get um, touch-ups on the paint. Every single close season we can see from the entrance that it's being worked on. It does look beautiful, I mean, just look at some of the detail on it. I don't know how old it is, to be fair. Looks like it's got a bit of age to it. Now we see the children's ride in the background, she looks well interested to be here. So we'll walk back around this way, and of course the Flying Dumbos. So, Flying Dumbos have well been hugely popular in parks. You've seen them open right the way across um, everywhere, including kind of like Water Valley, have added a very similar one at the theme park this year. This one, as you can see, is still on its trailer. It's certainly not a park model by any, any stretch of the imagination. And of course, last year we had something else here, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So whether or not the flying jumbos are, are staying for next season remains to be seen. Um, we're going to take a walk now, and we're going to start heading out of the park, and we'll summarise on our way out.
down here on Clarence Pier. This is kind of the entrance area. We didn't catch it on the way in because we were in quite an eager rush to get into the park and it was much busier here. There were kind of queues from the food outlets which you see here. And for those who haven't been down, the hovercraft um, was also coming in as we were walking in. So we decided for the sake of uh, noise pollution, bearing in mind it's quite windy as well, that we would, we would kind of hold fire on starting the film. We hope you have enjoyed it. We are going to summarise in the car. It's quite windy out here. You can probably hear it. But we thought we'd just see, uh, give you a, a kind of look at the entrance. As you can see, actually, it was apparently voted Peer of the Year in 2016. Must have missed that. I can't say I saw it. It certainly is kept up to date. We didn't go in the big arcade today, mainly because they spent all their money in the little one catching popcorn. Um, but it, it, they've had new carpets, it's all been done out in there. Um, all these you know, shops are new, they're well kept, as we said. There's a play area up the top, which is closed at the moment, so it's open during the day. There's a wimpy, you know, you can't come to a seaside resort without seeing a wimpy. And there's all this along here. I mean, there's even fresh fruit, look. Where do you get fresh fruit at the seaside? Well, I'll tell you where, in South Sea. So we're going to head back to the car now, and we'll sum up on the way back. So, we're finished now at um, Clarence Pier. We're now on our way back home. We did drive down. The reason why we come down for the evening is it's free parking along the seafront after six o'clock. Uh, it's the first time we've been down there, as I said, to, to kind of go on a few rides this year. Uh, we haven't been down since last year to do that. We do visit quite regularly to go in the arcades. Um, whilst we do like to go on rides, um, you know, it kind of adds up and costs money when you, when you visit these places quite a lot. We like to conserve a bit of money. Kurt was quite lucky, he found two pound, which he managed to spend twice until I realized that I paid for the water. So I got stitched up again. Not only did I not get my Pikachu, I ended up paying for him to go on the walk with his two pound, which he then spent again in the arcade. That serves me right for looking after his money, or at least me thinking I've looked after his money. That aside, the park, it looks good. It's in good condition. Um, the rides look good. The, the, the well maintained. They seem to be, you know, they're kind of not flaky paint like sometimes you get from these um, resorts, especially when you kind of consider it is a pier and it does get corrosion from the from the wind and the rain and all the elements of the uh, wonderful British weather all the time. We were a bit disappointed with some of the ride times. You know, the, the Twister didn't go on very long, the Waltzer didn't go on very long, the Breakdance program was terrible, to be honest. It, it just didn't feel like it was good value for money. Whether you buy wristbands or tokens, they should kind of treat everyone exactly the same. We did have good fun. Now, uh, where the Flying Dumbos were, you may have known like, last year they had the Solent Eye. Now, Solent Eye is one of those big Ferris wheels which you kind of see everywhere. They've had them in Brighton. Uh, we saw one at uh, Southport. We've seen one in Scarborough. We, we've seen them just about everywhere. Now, it only stayed a season. It wasn't. It was located in the park ground where the Flying Dumbos were, which is the last ride we looked at. And it was. It wasn't part of the wristband. I think it was about seven pound to ride. Don't quote me on it. I'm sure someone will. We'll come back and see it and although we did say certainly when we were by the little mini ferris wheels that indeed you do get some cracking views we don't understand why they would open the solent eye and the reason for this is one of the other landmarks <coughs> we looked at the tallest in portsmouth is the spinnaker tower the emirate spinnaker tower which is down in gunwharf so anyone knows portsmouth will know that gunwharf is the big shopping area a uh, discount outlets and various other bits going on and it has a um taller taller with the spike viewing tower than the Blackpool Tower, which is the Spinnaker Tower. Now, I've always maintained that I prefer the, uh, the Blackpool Tower, and um, you know, I, I give Spinnaker Tower maybe a little bit of a hard time. I think in terms of what it offers, in, in terms of guest experience, it is poor. In terms of views, maybe, maybe that does offer good views. It's probably hard to argue against it. We love Blackpool, I love the Blackpool Tower. It's my favorite tower in the UK. I think the views over Blackpool are amazing. You know, I like to look out kind of into the sea and open and everything like that and like to look at the um you know it obviously helps having the pleasure beach there to look down at the pleasure beach as well but obviously portsmouth is a historic town so from the top of spinnaker tower you can see the isle of wight you can see the historic dockyard you can see old portsmouth you can see sort of new portsmouth over the other side you can see the football ground you know the views are, are brilliant especially with the sailing that comes to town and you know various boats are coming now you've got the warships there is actually quite a lot to look at and, and maybe it doesn't get quite enough credit. So why they would open a Solent Eye is just a little bit, I've never really understood it. I didn't understand it last year and the kind of the assumption that it, it left was because it hadn't done very well and, and they wanted to replace it with something else or maybe the park wasn't getting out of it what they wanted out of it. But next year they have announced it's coming back. Whether or not it's looking to come back in the same place, whether or not they're going to free up some space not really sure where, I think it's probably going to have to go back into the park or whether they want to try and free up some space somewhere else to put it in remains to be seen. But their website is advertising it's coming back. 
whether that spells the end of the Dumbos, whether that spells the end of one of their thrill rides, we're not really sure, but I think certainly for the cost of um, the wristbands and things, maybe they should look to have it incorporated and maybe it'll be a little bit more of a success. We enjoyed Skyways. Um, we didn't go on the um, assault course today, but we kind of enjoyed it in the past, as long as we don't cut our ears open. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing. He's laughing in the background, <laughs> waving his hand, yeah. but he's the only one stupid enough to do that. And of course, we enjoy some of the other rides, the break dancer, the Seven, the Waltzer, and the, the, the Twister. They are great rides, short programs. Perhaps that can something the, the you know the park may need to look at, uh, particularly when it's quiet because it offers good value for money. It kind of keeps us at the park, kind of keeps us wanting to go back on, kind of keeps us wanting to buy more drinks, more food, spend more money in the arcade, and I'm, I'm sure it's all linked. But we've had a great evening. The, the sun's come down now. We're going to head back home. Um, we really hope you've enjoyed our uh, our visit out. As I said, we don't just do the big theme parks. We do visit the little places. We do visit the zoos. We do visit the farms. And we really hope you enjoy it. It was a family day out today. We've had a great laugh. We hope you've had a great laugh. And if you've never seen kind of South Sea like that, um, we really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time.